Well, speaking of the LA Lakers, Carmelo Anthony is now playing for the Lakers as well. How stacked is this team right now? My God. Well, I don't know. I think we started, you and I started three years ago, four years ago. Talking about this, yeah. And I told you Carmelo was going to be with LeBron. Lo and behold, in 2018, LeBron James joined the Los Angeles Lakers. We're going to have Carmelo Anthony soon. You think so? Because he was let go from, uh, was it the Rockets? And a lot of people are saying his career is over, but you don't think so. He'll be on the Lakers. I think you did. I, I did. I think you did, yes. And yes, I yes, said, yes, 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 you did. I did. And and I think I messed it up by saying it. Because if I maybe it would have happened if I didn't say anything because they were staying under the radar. Remember, they were going to eat. They were having wine. They were talking about their future, which is a great thing. I'm glad players are starting now to realize that's what general managers have done. Look what they did with uh, um, Messi. Uh, what's the, the soccer player? Uh, is it yeah. Messi? Messi. Yeah. It's like, hey, we're going to trade you and everything about you or th- over to this section because it's going to help build a league here. And I think LeBron and a whole bunch of guys have realized that we don't need to be moved around. We can move ourselves around because it's our career. Um, I hope, you know, I want him to talk to me. Uh, I told you when they, when I first came out, I was a bigger Carmelo Anthony fan than I was a LeBron James fan. I even said, I think he should have been the number one pick. I had to apologize to LeBron because he wanted, but I w- I'm such a Carmelo Anthony fan. Uh, being in this town, which he's been, uh, so imagine, he's been in New York, now he's in Los Angeles. Uh, it's it's going to change. If they If they don't win 72 games, I'm going to be disappointed in this team. Like, if they don't match what the Bulls did in 1996 or what the Golden State Warriors did by winning 73 games, I'll be disappointed in these guys. Okay. Well, Carmelo said that uh, loyalty doesn't exist in professional sports. True. That's true. Yeah. You have to be loyal to yourself. I explained this a long time ago. Um, When I was on Detroit Pistons, we were loyal to the team. But there's no loyalty because you can trade a guy and get somebody else. And they're only, they're not caring about how much you're dedicated to the team. They only look and say, can this person help us win this many games? So there's no loyalty. It's only about what you can do. If you can do it, cool, you get the job. If somebody else we feel can do it like you, but maybe a day better, we're going to give them the job. So like when guys go say to me, Oh man, I didn't like you when you were in Detroit, but then you became a bull. And then you became like, I I said, hey, the NBA to me is like the IBM. You just work in different offices. The Chicago office, the Los Angeles office, the Cleveland office, the Miami office, the New York office, that's it. It's still one league, but they're all different divisions of that league, Mm -hmm. different offices, headquarters um, in that state. So, you can't sit around and say, oh, this is my guy. This is the best thing. I'll give you an example. When I was watching you skip to my, skip to my Lou mm-hmm. interview, which you did a great job. Thank you. And I'm glad, you know, he was so mature and was able to, to understand. Very, him. very, very mature. I, yeah. One of the most mature professional sports players I think I've ever interviewed. Yeah, he, he definitely Period. matured into understanding from Queens to where he yeah. was in the finals. He understood. Mm-hmm. So he not understand I'm saying Jalen Rose was a terrible teammate. He didn't realize, or a lot of people don't realize that this, when you're in professional sports, this is your occupation. And your occupation is based upon you doing the best job you can possibly do and how much they can get out of you with the time they have for you. So he, he made a thought Jalen was a terrible teammate, but if you're both point guards, and you just got a six million, a six year, thirty million dollar contract. Hmm. I'm not gonna be your best buddy and friend. And I'm the vet. I don't know. And you did an interview with Queens Flip, right? Right. And you talked about Jalen Rose. You said him and I didn't get along. I love Jalen Rose as a man, but he's a terrible teammate. So, 
Like, and, and I did the interview with Jalen, and Jalen understood. The part that I let me ref- I, I would love to, so people could understand. Mm-hmm. It's not that he was a terrible teammate one way. You see what I'm saying? We, I was a terrible teammate to him as well. We were terrible teammates to each other. The only way you're going to learn is by watching me. The difference with me is, I would like I had Matt Geiger when he was in Miami. By my third year, Matt Geiger was playing way more minutes than me. That was a coach's decision. And I was like, I'm happy Matt's playing more. I'm happy Matt is moving on. Rick Mahorn was nice to me. Sid Green was great to me. Bill Lambeer taught me a lot. <laughs> he taught me a lot. Bill taught me a lot. Um, so it's it's literally, if they feel they can get more out of you, they're going to put you on the court. And if you're, if you're not getting the minutes you're supposed to get, you become expendable. Have you watched the Netflix movie High Flying Bird? No. Pretty good. I What's started it? watching it yesterday. High Flying Bird? High Flying Bird. It's it's about the basketball lockout. Oh. And uh, Bill Duke is is in it. You know, plays a coach in uh, you know, as one of the characters. And he had this really cold line, because I guess everyone's kind of trying to figure things out, you know, during the lockout. You know, not not the lockout, the um when, when things shut down over the over COVID. Okay. Yeah. Pandemic thing. Yeah, the, the pandemic thing. Sorry. So they were basically talking, you know, no one was making money, like salaries were being cut, you know, the agents weren't making money and so forth. So he's talking to his old, like, I guess his old uh, high school coach, uh, Bill Duke. And uh, he's like, the NBA made a game on top of the game. They knew that blacks were better at this game. So they had to make a game on top of the game to control the game. Because like, I guess at that time, uh, the Harlem Globetrotters started to go global. So the NBA had to come in and control that the whole game. And that's how they created this whole system that to this day is now what it is. It is. Because think about it. Um, when I got into the NBA, there was 11 European players only. Now there's what? 130 out of 430, out of 460 players. 